All right, AP Physics C. Um, I was making the answer key for your uh, worksheet three, and there's a couple things I just want to go over quick. Um, this idea of angular velocity and angular frequency. So the the symbol we use for it all is omega. All right, it's an omega, and that means angular or rotational. Some people call it angular, some people call it rotational, and it's velocity, speed, or frequency. All right, so it can be angular velocity, angular speed, angular frequency, or you could call it rotational velocity, rotational speed, or rotational frequency. It's a little confusing, um, but it is what it is. Alpha is our angular acceleration or rotational acceleration. Um, and to go back ahead of this, delta theta is angular or rotational position. Um, and therefore, just theta by itself would be, or sorry, angular displacement. Therefore, uh, theta itself would be angular position. Now, angular position is the angle that something has turned through. So if you have a mass on a string, right? Angular position is, let's see, here's markers. Dying. I'm going low on markers here. Where are they all? Oh, here we go. Some fresh ones. All right, so angular position here is the angle that the object has rotated through. Now, that would be, say, 45 degrees for an angular position. Or it could be radians, right? So if something rotated all the way around once, that would be an angular position or angular displacement of 2 pi. Um, if it rotated around three times, the angular displacement would be 6 pi radians. All right. So let's, let's back up here real quick, back to the worksheet, focus on that a little bit. So I've got this exercise in converting from revolutions per minute to radians per second and degrees per second. It's just dimensional analysis. You can take a look at that. It's, uh, you know, revolution per minute equals revolutions per minute, right? Ooh, we're fancy, fancy equation there. But then we just have to cancel. So um, it's revolution per minute. It's one minute per 60 seconds. That'll get seconds on the bottom times two pi radians per revolution. That'll get you the uh, two radians per second, min minutes. So you end up with radians per second. And this is whatever X, whatever that number is, revolutions per minute, and that's how you convert it. In degrees per second, you just put 360 degrees per one revolution right there. Um, Revolution is technically when something orbits around, like a planet around the sun. That's a revolution. A rotation is when something spins about its own axis. So that's a revolution. A rotation is if, like, you have a ball spinning about its axis. You'd call that a rotation, a rotation about an axis. But anyway, um, we use them somewhat interchangeably sometimes. Uh, now, the next thing we have to do is take a look at frequency and angular frequency. So frequency is the number of times something happens per second. It's often we do the units of it are cycles per second. Right? Cycles per second. Um, well, we call that a hertz. I can hear one of my former students saying, hertz, don't it? Uh, the joke he had. Uh, cycles, this is interesting. This is a, and a hertz is technically one over seconds or seconds to the minus one. Now, what happened to the cycles here? Why, why aren't those in there? Well, cycles is like, it's just a number. It's a count of something happening per second. So really the cycles, we write it in there sometimes, but really if you have like 60 hertz is the frequency of something. That means whatever it is, it's doing whatever that is 60 times per second. So it could be a TV refreshing itself 60 times every second, the, the image on the screen. It could be a light bulb flickering on and off at 60 
times per second. The cycles, it's just a placeholder. Um, think of it like dozen, right? Dozen is not a unit. It's just a count of things, right? I have a dozen donuts. Well, the unit is a donut, <laughs> and dozen is just a count. So it's a it's it's not a unit cycles it's just uh so it's just a something about the system so frequency f is hertz one over second frequency angular frequency is omega and that's the number of radians per second all right so how are these related well there are 2 pi radians per cycle, right? So if I want to convert from frequency to omega, omega is equal to 2 pi times f. So think about what this means. So if it's cycles per second here in frequency, right? So let's say it's one rotation per second. That would be cycles per second. That would be hertz. One rotation per second. I could replace cycles with rotation. So one rotation per second, right? One rotation per second would equal two pi radians per second. So that's, we just have to multiply whatever our frequency is in cycles per second times two pi, and that'll convert it to radians per second. Um, that's important for the second part of that question, right? So angular frequency or angular velocity is always equal to two pi times the frequency of either rotations or oscillations or whatever. Sometimes when we have a pendulum going back and forth, we actually report it as angular frequency. And we represent the motion of the oscillating object as a sine wave, right? So that kind of makes sense, right? Because we, we know when we get out to here, we've been back, we've gone pi through the sine wave. And then we go this way, we've gone another pi through the sine wave. A full cycle is two pi, right? So it makes sense when you think of it as a sine wave. Um, so how does this relate to period? Well, if omega equals 2 pi f, let me write that up here, and period equals 1 over frequency, all right, so that means if we solve this for frequency equals omega over 2 pi and plug it in here, we get 2 pi over omega for period, all right, and that's important. That's on the reference sheet for AP Physics C, I believe, that formula. I don't know if the top one is. I don't know if this one is, but this one definitely is. Frequency of oscillation. I gotta fix my 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 uh, stand here is a little bit off lately. It's not positioned properly. My phone's teeter-tottering. Anyway, that's that. Now, the next thing we have to do is, if we have something moving in a circle, right? All right. Let's say it started here and it rotated that far, theta. Okay? It's got some tangential velocity as it moves around in the circle, right? Well, how does that tangential velocity, how does that tangential velocity relate to how fast this object's moving rotationally? Well, it all goes back to the unit circle, all right? So let me take this little wedge here and kind of expand it out. All right. This is r, this is theta, and this is the arc length, s, right? Here's the object, let's say. So the distance it travels and the time would be its velocity, right? This, uh, I'm looking at like an instant of the wedge here. So it's velocity, it's linear velocity in meters per second. Jeez. It's linear velocity, or we call it tangential velocity, is equal to s... Delta S, the arc, the change in position here, divided by T, distance over time. Well, SR theta, arc length, if you think of, we usually just call it S, but it is a, it is a distance, right? So I don't really need the delta, equals R theta over T. And actually, the delta here is actually implied with the theta, right? Because theta is the uh, distance we've turned through. Well, what we get here is the tangential velocity equals r theta over t. Well, delta theta over t, that's angular velocity, so r omega. This right here, maybe I should do it in a different ink, this is omega. 
it's your rate of change of your angle over which rate of change of your angle. So r omega. So that's how tangential velocity is related to the angular frequency. So if it's, you know, to circle, let's say it's one meter and its angular velocity is 10 radians per second, then the tangential velocity is one meter times 10 radians per second. So our tangential velocity is one meter radian per second. What the heck? What, I, what, what What's the deal there? Well, we drop the radian when we do this calculation. Um, and I don't have a great, you know, philosophical way other than, again, that radian is just a placeholder. It doesn't even need to be, be really there, right? It's kind of like when we have frequencies, just one over seconds. We keep track of frequency, okay, cycles per seconds, how many times fully around. Well, when we deal with angular frequency or angular velocity, that radians, it could also just be one over seconds, but that's not a hertz because <laughs> there is radians there, but radians aren't actually a unit, believe it or not. Radians are dimensionless, kind of like degrees are not really a unit. It's a, it's a count. It's like a ratio, right? It's, um, it's not really there. So when we do this calculation, we actually drop the radians out of it and we just write it as meters per second. Radians are not a unit. They're just a placeholder for an angle, right? It's a ratio of, if you solve the unit circle, right? Theta is defined as uh, S equals R theta. So theta equals S over R, the, the units would cancel. It's dimensionless technically, all right? Now that also means, we'll see here, if it has, if it's speeding up, the angular acceleration is R times the, or sorry, the linear acceleration of the object moving from here to here is simply R alpha. All right, so you're going to need that. Um, I'm not going to talk about the kinematic curves yet. I think you guys can figure that out. All right, I made the solution up for the second part of that, so question two. So take a look at those to help you with question number three. Um, with that, you know, so I'll, I'll do one example here. Let's say I have an object rotating, right? And it, um, it's rotating really fast, it has a big initial tangential velocity, it has a big initial angular velocity, a big positive, let's say it's going counterclockwise, that's our positive direction in rotational physics, and then it slows down and stops. So this is our angular velocity versus time, angular angular acceleration versus time, and angular uh, position versus time, all right? So it's moving really fast, all right? And when we start the time, we also hit, a, hit some brakes, and it slows down and stops. So it's moving fast, so it has a big initial angular velocity, and it slows down and stops. So let's just make it linear. All right, so it's slowing down and stopping, so that's a, you know, negative slope here, so it's a constant negative acceleration. All right, so it starts off moving fast, so it's got to have a steep slope on angular position versus time. And by the end, it has to have no slope, so it's actually going to level off by the end of the time. So we use the same logic as we used for the other kinematic curves, but it's rotational, all right? Speeding up, slowing down, which is really useful. This is cars, tires on a car, um, tires on a bike, anything rotating, starting and stopping, which is quite a lot of things in life, believe it or not, right? Gyroscopes you know, flywheels in your engine, all different kinds of things. And we're going to learn later on in the course that the force that does this is called the torque. That force that drives rotation, slows down rotation. The force that provides the angular acceleration we're going to learn later on is a torque. Um, but yeah, we're going to work through those, see what you can do with those. Um, good luck to you, all right? Let me know if you have any questions.